Hi everyone, this is Ellie Mae with Silhouette Secrets Plus, and I am here today to share another Silhouette Secret with you. Today we're going to be talking about a feature that's called Text to Path, but most people just, when they ask uh, how to do it, they're asking how to put text around a shape. Generally, the most common one we see is a circle. So I'm going to show you a couple things here, but I have a full written tutorial that gives you more ideas on how you can use text to path. It will be linked in the description below, and I have a full blog post tutorial on that. I'm going to show you the most common things I see when people are asking questions on Facebook groups and social media on how to do this. So we're going to first start with the draw ellipse tool on the left hand side of our Silhouette Studio software. I'm going to click on that. If you want to draw a perfect circle, you're going to hold your shift key down and keep it held down while you draw your circle. I'm going to draw a perfect circle here. And then I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to get another draw ellipse tool and I'm going to just draw an oval. So if I do not hold my shift key down, I can draw and have different dimensions for my circle tool as well. This also works with your draw rectangle tool. If you hold your shift key down, you can uh, draw a perfect rectangle as well. So on our feature, it's called text to path. And if I click on my text tool on the left hand side, I'm going to then click onto my design area anywhere to get my text cursor. And then I'm just going to type out a word. And for this example, it doesn't really matter what the word is. I'm also going to fill this with color. So I'm going to come over to the right hand side to my fill color panel. And I'm just going to fill it with color so it's easier for you to see. You can also find the fill color panel up in the left corner with the quick access toolbar as well. If you click on the little drop down, you'll get the little uh, menu for your colors. I add color to my design so I can see it easier. And for shapes and things like that, that are large objects, it helps to select the object. I'm gonna click off of my text to deselect it and then double click back on it. This brings you to your text edit. So you can type new text, you can change the text within the box, you can extend the text line by moving this little blue line here if you had longer text. Um, if you click off of it to deselect it and click back on it one time, then you are able to do things like change the properties of your text. And you could change those properties under your text style panel. So I would suggest finding the text style that you would plan to use first and changing the text style first. Uh, text to path is one of those features. Every single font style is different. So some will have different spacing between your letters, the kern and the spacing, and that can make a difference in, when you go to put it onto a shape. So some fonts are going to work better in text to path than others will. And the only way to know if it's going to look good or work is to test it. So for the demonstration, I'm just going to use the default for my computer that is Arial. So if I click off of it and click back on it one time, then I could change my font style and it's going to apply to all of the fonts that are selected. So it, in order to move your text to a path, so if I move my text around here while it's in this properties mode, it doesn't do anything. I'm going to double click on it to bring up my text properties, my text style, where I could edit the text. So right now it's in text edit mode. Then you can see here, there's this little control handle that appears in the bottom left corner. Your text has to be in edit mode in order to get this. And what I mean is if I make a copy of this, I just held down my alt key and dragged it off. If I make a copy of this and I change it in any way, so if in this case, I'm going to right click and choose convert to path. But if you ungroup, weld, make compound path, release compound path, if you change it in any way, you are taking it out of editing mode. So it's no longer editable text and it's now a vector design. So if I convert this to a path and I double click on it, I do not get the edit mode for my text. You cannot 
add this text to a path when it's not in edit mode because I do not get the control handle. So you have to do the text to path while it is in editable text. While it's editable text, I can double click on it and I get this little control point, which means I can click this and drag it to my shape. And this will work for any shape. It'll work for a line, it'll work for a square, a heart. Um, in the tutorial that I have linked below, I show several different examples. You have the control point. If I move it away from my circle, then it jumps off of it. If I move it to my circle, it snaps to that shape. If I were to move it off and I move it to my oval, it's going to snap to that shape. The biggest thing I see questions on with text to path is one, how to do it. It's very, very simple. Double click on it, grab the control point and move it towards your shape. You can use this little slider bar here to move and adjust the text up or down away from your shape path. But what the question I see the most often is I have my text to path. I'm going to make another copy, hold my alt key down and drag a copy away. So I have two different text paths. I'm going to double click here and I'm going to drag this one on top. I want my text on the bottom now, but if I just drag it, double click, grab my control point and drag it to the circle, it goes inside, it goes out around, it goes to the side. The biggest thing with text to path is it matters where you are adding that text onto your path at. So where I place my text control point on that circle matters in how it's going to snap to it. I'm going to move this one away for now. So we'll focus on this one here. If I want my text to go in on the bottom so it's reading correctly from left to right, I am going to drag my text to the middle of my circle and then I'm going to slowly move my text to the bottom left. It will snap to the circle inside of my circle. It will snap so it's reading left to right and then I can move my slider bar. Now you want to be, you want to go slow. So if I move it to the center of my circle and then slowly move it to towards the bottom left and once it snaps in the correct direction, I can then slowly move that control point to the left and adjust it. Then use the slider bar to move that text outside if you want to move it outside the circle. Now, the one other thing I see here is you, the reason I say to go slow is because you can move it to the circle in the center of the circle. If I move it to the, just the left side, sometimes it has a different behavior. So it really matters and it makes a big difference in how fast you are moving it towards that circle because it's a very small distance between me placing it here on the inside edge and me moving it to the outside edge. Wherever you place that control point on your circle is going to determine where that text snaps to and how it looks on your shape. So here, if I drag it to this outside point, it's going to go on the outside edge of the circle, but it's going to be reading upside down. If I drag it into the center and drag it down towards the left, it's going to be inside the circle, which we can change, and then we can use the slider part to slide it out. Now the other part, like I said when we first started, is that every single textile is going to be different. You can see in this here with the Arial, that my spacing between my letters varies depending on where it's at on the shape, what the font style is, what the letter is that's next to it, and every single font style can vary. You can adjust this to a certain point 
within your textile panel. So on the bottom here of your textile panel, which is the letter A, the top letter A on the right hand side, you have your character spacing. You can change your character spacing and make that smaller so it looks a little bit better. And then you would adjust your control point to move it around on your shape. Again, every single font is going to vary. The One of the hardest ones to work with, I think, is when you have a scripty font and you want your letters to overlap. That spacing can be a little bit different. Sometimes if you, you can only work with it so much within your character spacing, you may need to ungroup and manually move those letters over to what looks visually appealing to you. So it's going to take sometimes a matter of just playing with that particular font you have or the one you've chosen or selecting a different font. Now, when you have your text how you would like it, in order to release it from your circle, you're going to click off of it, click back on it one time, and then right click and choose Convert to Path. This is for text that is not overlapping. If you need to connect your text with scripty text, that uses the weld feature. If your text is not overlapping, you can choose Convert to Path, and that is going to then separate your text from your circle. Again, we converted it to a path, which means it is no longer editable text. It is always a good idea. One, you can use Control Z or the undo button up here to go back. And it's always a good idea. I like to make a copy. So I just selected both, held down my Alt key, and then I dragged a copy off. So I have an original copy that I can go back to in case I need to change that text. I can click on my text to select it, choose convert to path, and then I have my text is separate from my circle. The biggest difference here is when you go to cut with heat transfer vinyl, if you were to use a text to path for heat transfer vinyl, you have to mirror your image. So if I were to right click here and choose mirror, Flip horizontally, it doesn't always work. Now, since I'm on video, it did work that time. If I go to send tab, let's see if it's gonna, it did work. Let's see. Sometimes you're gonna get some funky things. It'll even flip upside down. It may not cut properly. And that's all because it's still that editable text that's connected to this circle. So if you do run into an issue there, uh, make sure to convert your text to a path. And I'm just clicking undo. Convert your text to a path before you go to cut your HTB. Make a copy of it, convert your text to path, and then use that converted text to cut for your HTB. Again, just like anything else in the Silhouette Studio software, it takes practice and it takes time. You're gonna make mistakes, we all do, and start playing with this. You can put your text on any sort of path that you would like. There's an oval, you can draw even just a basic line. So I just chose my line drawing tool and I use the draw curved shape. I click to get my curved shape. You could, when you double click, then you just have a single line. If you wanted your text to follow that line, you can make it follow along that path anywhere you want. Again, wherever you place it on that line is going to determine how that text acts. The best way to do it is to get in the software and just play. I hope you've enjoyed this little silhouette secret tip. Check out the full tutorial to see further examples and step-by-step -step on how you can get text to path to work for you. Have a great day. Thank you.